Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. It is July 25th. Lisa Dillon here with you on a breezy start to mm -hmm. our day already. Uh, of course, we're live on Facebook every weekday morning, updating you with the latest news and weather headlines. Uh, it stays on your feed throughout the day, though, so you can watch it whenever it works best for you. And we also make it into a podcast. You can find that at inform.com slash podcast. Just look for the Inforum Minute. All right, uh, we were talking, you had a really cool tower cam shot of the flag blowing mm -hmm. in the breeze yeah. in Wapiton. Uh, we've talked about, as well, not being a really great hair day because of the breeze. Yeah, and also the humidity that's increasing. It's like a kind of combination of that, just like a rat's nest. I don't know. What, I don't know what the combination is. It's you not, know, it gets kind of frizzy. It does. It's, and then it's going to be blowing around. To, yeah, just not great hair day. <laughs> and not a great couple of days, too. Not only today, but tomorrow is also going to be windy. Increasing the heat, the humidity, upper 80s today, low to mid 90s tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, and then the wind should settle down a little bit for the weekend. Still probably a little breezy, but the heat's still here. And uh, we'll be tracking a few showers and thunderstorms. The next chance comes tomorrow night, so Friday night into early Saturday. I think Saturday itself for the air show. Most of the day should be dry. I do expect okay. a few more redeveloping storms evening into the overnight. And then Sunday, we'll see how many of those storms from Saturday last into Sunday morning. And then those could last into part of the day too. So something we'll have to watch. So not like a total wash of a whole day, no. but kind of like cook them up kind of storms? Yep, or? yep, especially in the evenings. It's just like how the storms behave in the overnights and how far and how long they last into the mornings. Because we've all had those storms that last, they start in western North Dakota in the night and they don't get to us till 8 or 9 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can last longer than we expect. So just keep that storm tracker up handy. Even tomorrow we'll have a lot more clearer forecast on that than this morning. The other thing we're watching is smoke. Uh, there have been some indications that behind these weak showers we'll have and thunder showers, thunderstorms possible, Friday night and Saturday, there might be some smoke following that. Mm. However, it gets complicated because we're also expecting a south wind on Saturday, at least in Fargo and most of the viewing area. Uh, kind of draw a line from like, a, let's say, Oaks to like Lake of the Woods. So draw like a kind of diagonal mm. line there. Okay. That south wind should keep a lot of smoke away from areas southeast of that line. Now, northwest of that line, it might be a little smoky. We'll see, though. The smoke is a hard forecast, and we'll know a lot more even by tonight. But there might be some unhealthy air around for us this weekend, unfortunately. And just a reminder, once again, you've been doing this, but I think it's so important. The heat is, is we're going to really feel it the next couple of days. Yeah. You need to take that seriously. Yep, and not only the next couple of days, really for the rest of the month into August, forecast temperatures are in the upper 80s to low 90s. So... Yeah, make sure you have uh, water if you're going to be outside, drink lots of it. Um, Gatorade's a good option too, replace those electrolytes, stuff like that. And of course, you know, if you feel off, maybe it's a good time just to head inside and find some shade. Okay, got to keep reminding you. Yep, All right, yep. thank you, Dylan. All right, well, let's check uh, some of our local headlines this morning. Fargo police right now are asking for your help finding a, an assault suspect. Police posted a few pictures of the man that they're looking for on their Facebook page, the Fargo Police Facebook page. Not real clear pictures, but they would like you to take a look. And if you recognize that person, uh, please give them a call. They say the assault happened right around 2 in the morning on June 8th in the 50 block of North Broadway. The victim had to go to the hospital with serious injuries, so they're looking for any information they can get. Uh, anything on the incident, call police. Uh, you can also text a tip using the keyword Fargo PD to 847-411. And Moorhead police are still looking for a shooting suspect. Of course, that's a story we've been tracking for you since police were called to an apartment building near the MSUM campus. We broke that story on First News early yesterday morning. Uh, that's when officers found a gunshot victim. He had a gunshot to his head. He was taken to the hospital. Uh, he remains in critical condition right now. If you have any information on this shooting, please call police. They're asking you to call 701-451-7660. Of course, we'll continue tracking that story uh, for you as well. And we have new developments in a story that has caused a lot of controversy in recent months with the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. Uh, we've now just learned the project's developer has submitted three or four new legal claims. We are still working to learn exactly what the issues are, but we have learned they are related to the contract between the developer and the Diversion Authority. Of course, we've been reporting on this quite a bit. There's been an ongoing dispute over the use of epoxy-coated rebar in the Diversion Project, and of course that controversy led to the project director, John Joel Paulson, leaving the $3.2 billion project in April. So big story. Uh, you can read more on that on our website, inforum.com. Today is Miracle Treat Day, of course, a day where local DQ locations give you a chance to satisfy that sugar rush, 
but also help children in need at the same time. Like dozens of locations all across North Dakota, Minnesota coming together. Uh, they're donating at least a dollar, sometimes more, of their proceeds from today's blizzard sales to the Children's Miracle Network, and of course that benefits Sanford Children's here in Fargo. President Joe Biden delivered a solemn call to voters to defend the country's democracy, as he laid out in the Oval Office his address, and he explained his decision to drop his bid for re-election and also throw his support behind his VP, Kamala Harris. He insisted in that speech last night that the defense of democracy is more important than any title. Of course, it was his first public address since his Sunday announcement uh, saying that he was stepping down. Another big story we're tracking for you today. Uh, today, Biden, along with Vice President Kamala Harris, are set to meet with the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, he actually had a big congressional address yesterday. It was a 52-minute speech where he attempted to shore up uh, U.S. support for the ongoing war in Gaza. Uh, he's actually going to be meeting, well, Biden today, but former President Donald Trump tomorrow. So we'll continue tracking all of those developments for you as well. Coming up this morning from 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra and Inform.com, just one day into training camp, and the Vikings are already dealing with a season-ending injury to one of their starters. Uh, Dove's going to have a recap of day one from Egan. Plus, Horace High School just got its first Division I athlete, but the next may not be far behind. Find all the details there on Hot Mike with Don Mizzo from 9 to 11. And remember, our next newscast is coming up here at 11 o'clock this morning, but we have you covered this afternoon as well, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10. And we'll be back tomorrow morning, Friday morning, from 5 to 7 for another First News edition as well, getting you ready for the weekend. Have a great day, everyone.